Hello, my name is Adam, and today I'm going to walk you through how I made this Pokemon diorama as a gift for some close friends of mine. I started by making this base off screen using some MDF and a thin acrylic sheet. I made sure to scuff up the sheet using an orbital sander to give this foam safe CA glue and XPS foam some tooth to stick to, which I attached off screen. I used my Proxon hot wire cutter to trim off the excess foam. I made sure to keep the foam on top while cutting, even though it made it harder to see what I was doing. This method puts less strain on the wire and results in a more flush cut. While doing this, I made sure to wear a respirator and had a window open the whole time. I also have an air purifier that runs most of the day while I'm working to make sure any fumes are taken care of right away. Now that we have a good surface to work on, it's time to add some texture and to cover up this gap. I'm going to use a product called Sculptamold, which is a modeling compound made from paper pulp and plaster. This isn't the easiest product to apply to a smooth, flat surface like this, but because I didn't do any carving or sculpting on the foam itself, this is going to be the best way to add some natural shapes and undulations. This product is great in that it is easily smoothed out by simply adding water after about 20 minutes of cure time, so you can get rid of any of the obvious paper chunks as well as unwanted shapes or imperfections. I designed models of my friends in 32mm scale using the website HeroForge, and then I printed them on my resin printer. Also, I downloaded these Pokemon models from a website called CG Trader, which I also printed. Links to these models can be found in the description below. In order to add a realistic earth texture, I start by coating the base in a lot of basic just white glue, which I end up spreading with a slightly wet brush. For my dirt and earth textures, I like to use real dirt from the backyard, and then I mix in some unsanded tile grout and some finely ground pigment powders made from chalk pastels. The dirt adds some texture and color, while the grout basically turns it all into a solid rock after it gets glued down. I like to use a variety of pigments from the pastels to ensure that I get a more varied and interesting ground color, and I grind them up using a fine strainer. I use that same strainer to apply the dirt mixture to the base, making sure to get even coverage. One of the best tips I can give for creating realistic scenery is to work in thoughtful layers, rather than just making a flat surface of one and then a flat surface of another and then another. It's best to work back and forth between them to avoid a flat uniform appearance. This is especially important if you want to avoid a football field look in your scenery. Here, I am adding a thin layer of isopropyl alcohol to break the surface tension of the dirt, which allows the Mod Podge and water mixture I spray next to seep into the dirt instead of sitting entirely on top of it. There is usually some pooling, which I dab away with a paper towel. I applied a transparent ink through my airbrush to help tint the surface closer to where I wanted it and to make it all more cohesive. I followed that up by separating the walkway area with a khaki paint. And I ended up covering that with just plain grout on its own. More glue is added on top of the dirt so I can apply different shades of foam flocking. As you can see, I leave some of the dirt showing to help give you the appearance of depth. 
Not all grass is perfectly manicured and you're always going to see a little bit of dirt coming through. To add depth and color variation, I start by using an earth blend of foam flocking from Woodland Scenics. Then I use a green blend from the same company and go back and forth between the two. Now this is starting to look good, but I want to brighten things up a bit so it fits the more cartoony vibe I'm going for. I'll use a large makeup brush to dry brush a yellow green all over the flock. Now because I did the same isopropyl, alcohol, and watered down Mod Podge technique as with the dirt, I can safely paint over all of this without it going all over the place and making a mess. I wanted to add a slight color variation to the sandy walkway with a wash. And then I covered the whole thing with it instead. To add more depth and dustiness back into it, I dry brushed different khakis and ivories over the whole area. For this step, I'm going to use a thicker tacky glue, as I find it holds static grass better than standard white glue. I began by applying a layer of shorter autumn colored grass using my static grass applicator, and then I added a layer of longer, lighter color grass on top. I smoothed out the transition by adding another layer of short grass along the edges. This helps it look a little bit better and not so jarring going from short to long. Then just to add some color variation and some extra visual interest, I dropped on a couple of black rocks. I'll set that aside for now and while it's drying, I'll make a fence. I opened up my box of wood and picked out some balsa cut to various lengths. Balsa wood is almost foam-like in that it is very easy to cut with just a basic knife. I stained the wood with a watered down brown wash that I made up from several random washes that I had left over. I then use a ruler to make sure everything is lined up and then use a thick super glue to hold all of the pieces together. Because it soaks right into the wood grain, it creates a near instant bond, but that means you also have to work kind of fast. Then I use more of that same super glue to attach the fence to the base. Super glue accelerator here helps cure the glue instantly. To fill in some of the gaps that you can see under the fence posts, I'll add some plain dirt and then just seal it in with thin super glue. After digging through my bag of Woodland Scenics tree armatures, I found one that kind of suited my needs. Using my side cutters, I was able to chop this up to kind of suit the aesthetic I was looking for. These armatures are basically just textured wire, so they're very easy to bend and shape how you want them. Then I sanded away the mold lines, imperfections, and all the marks I made from cutting. I attempted to do some wet blending here using two different shades of a golden brown.
and then I followed that up with a dry brush of a light ivory. Then I used my pen drill to make a hole and glued down my tree. Then I added some clump foliage to the tree to bring it to life. As I add some extra visual interest, I really want to take a moment to thank you for watching. It would really mean a lot if you could like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. I'm new to making dioramas and videos, but this is my first video featuring a voiceover. If you enjoyed it, please let me know and I'll continue making more videos like this one. In addition, you can find links to my Patreon, Instagram, and Amazon shops below. If you want to help support this channel, or if you're interested in any of the tools or equipment I use, please take a look. By using these links, you can help support my channel and my passion. Now, if there's one thing I'm worse at than painting models, it's filming myself painting models, so there's not a whole lot of footage here. In future videos, I'm hoping to get better at this, but uh, for right now, kind of take it as it is. For all the Pokemon, I made sure to spray their base coat with an airbrush as they're generally very smooth. But for the more detailed trainer characters, I used an Army Painter Speed Paint. I find this paint is very vibrant and very colorful and thought it would really suit the aesthetic that I was going for. Now I did spray them off screen with a matte varnish and then added some additional highlights to add vibrancy with just plain acrylic paint. Unfortunately, I intended for this diorama to feature lighting effects in the form of a flamethrower attack being blocked by Umbreon. However, my lack of skills in electronics resulted in overall just poor execution, and I ended up breaking my Charizard model two or three times in the process. So I made a new one, and some friends to go along with it. All that was left was to add the models to the base and paint the rim black. I really hope you enjoyed this video, it was a lot of fun to make, and I really want to do more in the future. Please let me know what you think, and if you think I should continue doing voiceovers. Finally, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow, every little bit helps. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.